نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه وبركاته عليه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون إن أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديرا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن, فإن خير الكلام كلام الله تبارك وتعالى وأحسن هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة طلالة وكل طلالة في النار as we continue with this tremendous treatise and we wind down the last final chapter of the book of that which is Aqidat al-Salaf by the Sahab al-Hadith by the tremendous scholar of Islam Shaykh al-Islam as some of the ulama in the past used to call him by nickname Abu Uthman Ismail Abu Rahman Ali Saburi Ali Saburi Sabuni Rahimallah Rahmatu Wazian. As we wind down the final chapter of the book, and we said that from the last class, we stopped at that which is some of the mannerism of Min Adabi Ashab al Hadith, Min Adabi Ashab al Hadith, that which is from the mannerism is in the characters of the people of Hadith. We said that this chapter was pertaining to the refutation against Ahl al Ra'i, for the people of Al Ra'i from the Ahnaf and some of the Masail or some of those issues and some of those affairs in which the Imam al-Sabuni is seen as a major mistake and we know that it's incumbent upon Ahl sunnah and we have to refute that which is a falsehood and we have to propagate the truth <coughs> and likewise speak it especially in the affairs of that which is considered dangerous upon the Muslims and we said that the people in the ulama of the past some of them especially in the aspects of fiqh and from them is Ashab al-Ra'i, the people of al-Ra'i, or the people of opinion, and those scholars from who followed the madhab of Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, and from his students, from those who also have followed his madhab, we know it's binding upon Ahl sunnah to follow the nusus, to follow the text of that which comes in the Qur'an, in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And anything that goes against, that goes against that, if they are from our scholars, from Ahl Sunnah, or they are from our scholars in Islam, then they will be rewarded for their ijtihad. We know they will be rewarded for that which they put forth with a tremendous effort in order for them to say that which is the haq. And they will be ma'jurun, they will be rewarded. But it's incumbent and binding upon us not to follow them in their mistake. Rather, it's incumbent upon us that if the nusus points towards a certain affair, it's binding upon us to give precedence to that and to believe in it and to give that precedence on any, over anyone's statement, no matter who it is. As our religion is found in the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Ijma' and the consensus of this, of this, of this Ummah. So you will find that Imam al-Sabuni rahimahullah, as we stopped in that which is the last line, we are on al-Musara'ata ila adai sarawat al-maktubat wa iqamatiha fi awail al-awqat. أفضل من تأخيرها إلى إلى آخر الأوقات إحرازا للوجود الحميلة بها والمثوبات. We already we finished that. We talked about how that is from the mannerisms of Ahl Sunnah is that they hasten towards performing the salawat, the prescribed prayers and the obligatory ones, and establishing them in the first part of its time. And it's more virtuous, and it is better than one putting it off to that which is the last time, or the last part of its time. Excuse me. He says, إِحْرَازًا لِلْأُجُورِ الْحَمِيلَةِ بِهَا وَالْمَثُوبَاتِ For one, doing it and out of, out of 
trying to collect those tremendous rewards and benefits of performing it in its first time when it comes in, or in its time. And also likewise, the Mas'ala, if you read in the line, it says, وَيُوْجِبُونَ قِرَاءَةَ فَاتِحَةِ الْكِتَابِ خَلْفِ الْإِمَامِ And also likewise, they <coughs> declare as an obligation, and they oblige the recitation of Fatiha al-Kitab, of reading Surah al-Fatiha, behind the Imam. We said that the Musan, al-Musannif, rahimahullah, that he put this in a chapter to refute Ahl Ra'i, and to also clarify what is the mannerisms of Ahl Hadith after those affairs of that which pertained to the i'tiqad, to the belief and the conviction of Ahl Sunnah. He put certain mannerisms in the end of the book. For example, how they declare it to be unlawful, that which intoxicates, and they stay away from it. Any type, any type of affair or any type of drug is all considered what they call muskir, as we already covered. A muskir is anything that intoxicates and render one, renders one intoxicated. Or it clouds his, his mind state or changes his demeanor as far as his mind and his intellect. And we talked about from the affairs of our religion, from that which is from those tremendous objectives that Ahl al-Islam or that which is of the religion came in order to preserve as the aql as we know from them was al hayat from the beautiful affairs of our religion is that it came to preserve certain important rather the most important of that which a man what he loves of this dunya of that which he loves of these mundane worldly affairs for example that which is of to preserve or preservation of his mind of his sanity and that which renders his mind or his sanity, that which renders it or taints that or takes him out of his normal demeanor, is that which is of intoxicants. And we said that Al Imam al Sabuni put in the chapter that they, had, they declared to be unlawful those intoxic intoxicants that are made from liquor or that which becomes fermented from that which is of grapes or raisins or that which is of those tamar and, those, and the honey. All of that in which people use in order to make intoxicants out of. That they declare it to be unlawful and they also likewise, they believe in giving one the, the penalty as a result of falling into that major crime or sin. We also said that from those affairs also likewise as well everyone. That which is of drugs such as weed or cocaine and anything similar to that. Rather we said that our Shaykh Rabi ibn Hadi Madkhadi Hafidullah wa ra'a that he said that is min, min akhbati anwa'i al-mukhaddirat. That which is of al khamar and that which is of, excuse me, that which is of mukhaddirat, min akhbati anwa'i al khamar or min akhbati anwa'i al muskirat is al mukhaddirat. He said that which is of the most disgusting and wicked of all those things an intoxicated individual, he said that which is of al mukhaddirat, that which is of drugs. Meaning those illegal drugs that are sold <coughs> to the people, in which we know in these days and times, especially here in the West, that which is of cocaine or hashish or weed or things of that like. And we said that also likewise that is, that is considered from Khamar, from the statement of Ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, where he said that Khamar is of five types. And he mentioned those types where he said that which is of al anab then he said that which is of Zabib, and that which is al hinta and that which is of Sha'ir, and that which is also likewise of what he mentioned, of Dura. Then he mentioned in the end, he said, well, khamar ma khamar al -aqal. Then after Umar Khattab mentioned the five types of that which is of intoxicants, that usually in most cases in which intoxicants are made out of, he gave that which was the, the that which takes place in majority in most cases, meaning that which is made from grapes, that which is made from honey, that which is made from barley, that which is made from wheat, or that which is made from that which is corn to the end of it. Then he generalized. In his last statement, he said, well, khamar ma khamar al -aqal. He said, al khamar, that which is al khamar, is considered alcohol or intoxicant, is that which changes and clouds the demeanor and the mind of the person. So it's general from all, anything that changes the, the demeanor and clouds the mind and hurts and renders the mind in a manner which is deficient. Because, like we said, from the goals of Al Islam and objective, or from the affairs that it came in order to preserve was the mind and the sanity of a person. The mind and the sanity of a person. And also likewise, al haya And also likewise, al nasab And also likewise, one's aqidah. And also likewise, his amwab, wal a'rab. All of these are from the affairs of which the religion came in order to preserve one's life, 
as we know, the preserving of life, the preserving of one's mind, and also the preserving of one's lineage by avoiding fornication and adultery, which we know is widespread these days and times where Shaitan has totally switched and made these affairs as if they're just the normal affairs that people do on a daily basis. But however, they are from the affairs in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not legislate for his creation due to the fact that it causes the tremendous effects and corruption of corrupting one's lineage. And also likewise, that which is of the preservment of one's honor and one's belief and one's money. As the religion came to preserve all these affairs, but that which we want to talk about today and that which you see in the Imam al -Sabun, excuse me, I'm sorry, that which we spoke about is that what the Imam al-Sabuni said, that which is Ahl al-Hadith declare, that which is of Khamab to be what? Unlawful. Then he put that they hassled towards, also from the mannerisms, is that they hassled towards praying their salawat in the first part of his time. So it's not the fact that, inshallah, we all declare with Allah, alhamdulillah, that we salafi, we ascribe towards the authentic, tremendous minhaj, which is minhaj is salafi, which is the minhaj in which the companions of the Prophet sallallahu were upon, which is a minhaj is salafi, which is a minhaj al haq wa deen al haq and that is the religion of truth, and that is the methodology of truth. But what comes as after our belief in that, and our submittance to that, is binding upon us what necessitates and shows that we truly believe it, which is the actions. And those actions, Ya Ma'ashul Ikhah, which is also from faith, is what we're given an example of now. When Imam al-Sabuni says, وَيَرَوْنَ الْمُسَرَعَةَ إِلَىٰ أَدَاءِ السَّرْوَاتِ الْمَكْتُوبَاتِ وَيُقَامَتِهَا فِي أَوَائِلَ الْأُوْقَاتِ that which they has it towards performing the prescribed prayers and establishing them in the first part of his time and also from his virtue. Not to put it off to the last part. In order to gather those tremendous rewards and benefits as we talked about before in the last class. We said last class that the ahnaf ashab al-ra'i as we talked about, they had a little that which is of a discrepancy as far as in the khamar and the aspect of intoxicants in which the Imam al-Sabuni refuted and also likewise our Shaykh Rabi' ibn Hadi al-Madkhadi hafidhullah wa ra'ahu nasallahu yutila fi umrihi bil a'mal al-sariha where he also mentioned of that which is of the ahnaf say of that it's permissible to take other than grapes and other than rutab as that which is of khamar one can take it as long as it does not reach the level of intoxifying one which is all of it is incorrect. The next affair, like we said from that, which is from Ahl al-Ashab al-Ra'i, but they also make a mistake in it. And like we said, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon them and give them a reward for that which they put forth of ishtihad. But however, it's binding upon us not to follow them in their mistake. But what's incumbent upon us is, like we said, to embrace the haq and give that precedence to anything else. Where it says, however, we've known, or we made clear from the last class that the Ashab al-Ra'i Abu Hanifa and those who followed them, followed the madhab of, of Abu Hanifa, they will put the salah off, like we said, to the last part of his time, ikhwa, like we said, that which is of a dhuhr and asr, they will put it off to the last part of his time. For example, those from Ashab al-Ra'i, you'll find, like we talked about in the last class, they will put dhuhr all the way off to that which is the time almost to asr. And they will also, like we said, for, for al-Asr, they will put their off all the way up to the time to maybe 10 minutes before Maghrib. And you will find that, especially that which is in Hind, in India, in Pakistan, from Ahl al-Hadith. We say Ahl al-Hadith, and they are not Ahl al-Hadith. Rather, as, as our Shaykh Ubaid, Ibn, Ibn, Shaykh Ubaid al-Jabri, Shaykh Ubaid Ibn Sulaiman al-Jabri, Hafizullah wa ra'ah, that there are people in Pakistan and Hind, that they ascribe to say that they're people of hadith, but they're not the people of hadith, rather they're people who impersonate the people of hadith, as our sheikh called them Ahl al-Hadith. He said, you will find them that they have two events. One event when the salat comes in, and then another event right before the last part of the time when the salat is about to go out. And you'll find that our sheikh, the sheikh Rabi' ibn Hadi, Mithali, Hafidullah, wa ra'ah, where he even mentioned and said that this is furqa. He says, يعني هذه فرقة والله وتفريق للمسلمين بكونهم يؤذنون he said, this is controversy and also this is division. He says, it's dividing up the Muslims. He said, because of them, Kondi Adhan and the last part of the times for the Salawat, meaning when the Salah is about to go out, also is about to go out. Ten minutes before Maghrib is about to come in, you hear another Adhan. Then ten minutes, you hear another Adhan for another Salah. 
As we said, Yamash al Ikhwa wal Ahadi Kathira to Fisahihi wa Hidi Hima Kathira to Jidda to Nusada and the Rasul can you sell his Sarwat fi Awadi Waktiha. We already covered this from last class. We're just reiterating that which we covered. Sa in the Rasulah can you sell his Sarafi Awadi Waktiha. Wa Suila an Avdil Ama Sala who Ibrahim Sa'u Radi Allahu Anu Fakala Ayu Lamali Ahabu Illah Kala Sarato at the Waktiha. A Sarato Lati to Adda fi Awadi Waktiha. Thumma Kalathuma Ayu. قال ثم بر الوالدين ثم أي قال جهاد في سبيل الله فجعل في طليعة هذه الفضائل العظيمة الصلاة في أول وقتها حتى إنه صلى الله عليه وسلم لما أخبر أنه سيوجد أمراء يؤخرون الصلاة عن وقتها أجاز الله من يصلوها في بيوتهم إذا لم يصليها الإمام في أول وقتها فإذا كنت في بلد يؤخرون الصلاة عن وقتها فصليها أنت في أول وقتها فإذا وجدت جماعة فصلي معهم وتكون لك نافلة هذا لشدة فضيلة هذه الصلاة وأهمية وقتها as the Sheikh said حفظ الله ورعه that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم they used to pray the salah in the first part of his time and it was asked what is the most virtuous of actions it was asked by Ibn Mas'ud رضي الله عنه Ibn Umm Abd where he said فقال أي العمل أحب إلى الله what is the action most beloved to Allah he said that to pray that your person prays in his first part of his time. And a person pray it when it comes in. Then after that he said, Thum after that, O Messenger of Allah, he said that a person be upright and dutiful and be kind towards his parents. And you see, like, yes, Ya Ma'ashul Ikhwa, all of these are actions to show how the religion of Islam is a beautiful religion. Calling one to be upright with his Lord, which is the Salah, which is from the Hukuk of Allah. Then after that, the hukuk of al-adamiyin who are the parents. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put his right first, as he deserves. Tabaraka wa ta'ala, then he puts that which is of the rights. That which is, keeps the families and ties together, which one be, be, that one continues to be dutiful and upright and be kind towards his parents and, and show them reverence and respect to the end of it. And also to that which is fighting in the cause of Allah and that which we know of the jihad fi sabilillah, the jihad or fighting in the cause of Allah with his conditions. For ya ikhwa, how important even the salah is in praying in the first part of his time, the Prophet Sallallahu even informed of those authentic ahadith. He said they will even be leaders and rulers. They will put off the salah out of his time. And the Prophet Sallallahu had made it permissible for them to pray in their houses. If the imam or the person who is the Muslim ruler or the leader or those when there's jurisdiction, he commands them to pray the salah out of its time. So the Prophet ﷺ told everyone and advised them, Our religion is comprehensive for every type of circumstance. And the Prophet ﷺ said that these days were going to come. He said, For what do we do if things to come? The Prophet ﷺ gave specific instructions pray in your houses. And if you are in a city where they put it out, pray it in your house in the first part of its time. Because we know there's no. There's no obedience to the creation and disobedience to the creator. If you find a congregation to pray with them, he said, then it will be for you a nafila. It will be for you a voluntary superiority prayer. He says, this is in order to, to give emphasis for the virtue of praying the prayer in his first part of his time and the importance of praying in his first part when it comes in. And we know that the Prophet ﷺ, he said that those First part of his time, or the meaning of ala waqtiha, or fi waqtiha, or li waqtiha, that it means in its time. Pray the salah in its time. And we talked to some of our brothers and gave them advice where they thought, where they had a misunderstanding, that the meaning of the salah of his first time, as soon as it comes in. Like if you wait a 5 or 10 or 15 minutes after the salah comes in, then that's considered putting the time off from, from the first part of his time. He said no. The meaning of the hadith is to pray in its time, when it comes in. And it does not necessarily as soon as a person knows that the salah has come in, that he put it off 10 minutes or 15 minutes, that he has now put off the salah where he's late, or now he's playing at in the times which what they call waqtul itirar, but the time where a person now is compulsed, where he's forced to rush it. No, that's not the meaning of the hadith. The meaning of the hadith is to pray the salah in its time. So one should not feel any type of, of, they shouldn't feel sad or grieve if, for example, 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes passed, the salah came in. So the meaning of the hadith, like we said, is to pray in its time. And we said 
the, that which the Ahnaf uses, the nail, we already covered it. Maybe they say, فَإِذَا اشْتَدَّ الْحَرْ فَأَبْرِدُوا بِالصَّلَاةِ فَإِنَّ شِدَّةَ الْحَرْ فِيهِ جَهَنَّمْ That's the denial that they use in order to put off dhuhr, ta'asr. The hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where he said that if the heat becomes severe, then put off dhuhr, فَأَبْرِدُوا بِالصَّلَاةِ Then put off dhuhr a little while, meaning until the, the heat calms down a little bit. For verily, the severe heat that you find is from the breath, or the hellfire breathing. So we say, Ya Ma'ash al that hadith, the ahnaf, the people of Ashab al Ray, they use that in order to put off Salat al Dhuhr to almost the Asr, or Salat al Asr to almost what? Maghrib, which is incorrect due to the fact, like we said, to the blind following of evidences and using evidences in its improper place. For verily, a person falls into something which is dangerous, in which you'll find that Imam al Sabuni took time out in order to refute here because you'll find there are some of the that which is of the people who are affected by this madhhab to this day, where they put off the salat all the way up to his last part of his time, and the Imam al Sabuni took the opportunity in order to refute this notion. For that reason, yeah, we, we say, Ya Ma'ash al Ikhwa. Also, it's incumbent upon one not to pray the salat in the last part of his time because also the prohibition. We said from the reasons of why one should hasten towards praying the salat on time, due to three. Number one is our Sheikh Muhammad ibn Hadi Madhadi, where he said, that which is of, is asra' li ibra'i dhimma. He says, asra' li ibra'i dhimma. That person should pray the salat as soon as it comes in. He said, because it is considered one hastening towards relieving himself of that binding duty that Allah. <laughs> oh man. Sheikh. Oh man. Cut off. Is it still recording or did it stop? I'm not sure. Is it still? I think it's still recording. So somebody called and I thought they'd cut off. No, I said it's still recording. Okay, I thought it stopped. What was it saying? Why we said it's prohibited, Ya Ma'ash al Ikhwa, that one, that he not. Uh, oh, oh, I lost my train of thought. That one, uh, not put a, a pray in the last part of his time. We said that a person should stay away from doing this. Uh, uh, number one, I, for, I now remember, excuse me. Sheikh Muhammad Hadi Madhadi Hafidullah Wada, he said, that's Asra, the Ibra al Dimma, the Tabri at the Dimma, that the binding responsibility. That Allah is obliged because every you know every day one has to pray the salat one time. He says, That binding ob uh, obligation that's around your neck has been freed. It's been freed and released. So, so I want to pray it off. Khalas, you've prayed it, you did your obligation, fulfilled it. Number two, he said, A person doesn't know. He put off the salat late, he doesn't know when he'll die. And he'll die in a state where he did not pray or did that which is obligatory and binding upon him or that which is a duty. He said, number three, also likewise, this type of affair resembles the munafiqeen, the salat al-munafiqeen. As we know, that's the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, tilka salat al-munafiq. Yajlisu yarqub al-shabs hatta idha kan al-bayna qarun al-shaytan qama fa naqara arda'an. La yadhkuru Allah fiha ila qalila. For the end of the hadith. The Prophet ﷺ has said, that is the prayer of the hypocrite. He said, he sit and he waits. He says, until the sun it becomes between the two horns of shaitan. Then he stands and he prays it quickly. فَنَقَرَ Meaning that he prays it as if he's, as if he's praying it very quickly just to get, it, get rid of it, just to get, get it done. Get it done and out the way. He does not remember Allah Taala in it, in that salah, except that which is little. So these three reasons are the reason why one should not put off the salah due to the fact that it's virtuous to pray on, on this time. And also, relieving one of his... Uh, Obligation that Allah has made upon him. Secondly, the person doesn't know when he'll die. And that obligation, he'll die in a state where he did not carry out that which is obligatory upon him. And also thirdly, like we said, it's, it resembles the salat of the munafiq. So one should not put the prayer out of his time. That which is of, we said, the only exception, that was pertaining. And we're not talking about the com com where one combines between the salawat. That's something the affairs of which we'll talk about at a later occasion. Because we know it's permissible 
Kamban Dohor with also in certain in certain circumstances. And likewise Maghrib and Isha is Maghrib and Isha in certain circumstances. But what we're talking about here is that which the Ahnaf, what they put off, what the Ahnaf, and where they fall into mixing up certain uh, circumstances and making it obligatory. Use it something that the Prophet ﷺ gave something temporarily as praying Dhuhr. When it becomes hot to put the Salat of Dhuhr off, and that's it. But not the other Salawat. And that's only in a circumstance where the heat is severe. And also likewise, we know the most virtuous time for uh, Salat al-Isha is the third of the night or the second part of the night. That which we talked about in the last lesson. Where we said that that which is of al Hab al harbi where he said in his poetry, he said, for bil maghribi, wa bil ghurubi maghribi qad dakhla. Wa bil ghurubi maghribi qad dakhla. Excuse me, everyone. Allergies for Allah. Yeah. Excuse me. Wa bil ghurubi maghribi qad dakhla. ويبقى امتداده إلى غيبوبة الحمره وهو أول وقت العشاء وفي اختيار نقل تأخيرها إلى ثلث وإلى نصف الليل وفي الاختيار ونصف الليل وكل في الصحيح نقل That which the Lihaf of the Hakabi said of his poetry said وبالغروب المغربي قد دخل ويبقى امتداده إلى غيبوبة الحمرة حمرة وهو أول وقت العشاء وفي اختيار نقل تأخيرها إلى نصف أو إلى إلى ثلث وإلى نصف الليل وكل في الصحيح نقل. That he said in his poetry. That he said that the virtuous times for the salawat of the isha is the third part and the second part. And we know the hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم which is pertaining to that where he said that if it would not have been the hardship upon my ummah I would have made this time the time for isha. And also there's another narration where it says the da'af al-da'if wa li kibari al-kabir fa ja'altu waqt al-isha fi hadhi al-sa'af wa kama qala nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he said that if and not then for that which is the weak of those who are weak and the, elder, the elderly age of those who became elderly and old he said I would have made waqt al-isha this time. And there's narrations that show that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sometimes would pray isha when he came in minutes, a couple of minutes after it came in, and sometimes he would put it off to the middle of the night if he seen that some of the Sahaba, where it says, فَإِذَا عَجَّلُوا صَلَّ بِهِمُ الْعِشَاءِ فَإِذَا اجْتَمَعُوا فَعَجَّلَ بِهِمُ الصَّلَاةِ يعني صلاة العشاء وَإِذَا أَبْطَأُوا تَأَخَّر صلى الله عليه وسلم, as it comes in one narration, that he said that if he seen the Sahaba gathered, meaning that the people seen that they wanted to go home and go to their families and handle their, their take care of their necessities, and he see them gather, he would, what? He would hassle towards praying the Isha when it came in, as soon as it came in. And if he seen that they were slow and they were lingering around and it seemed like they would wanted to wait, then he would what, pray the Salat at the third part of the night or the or as to the middle part of the night as the narrations come. So that is the virtuous time for that, which is of what? For those Salawat. Then the next affair he talks about, he says, وَيُوْجِبُونَ قِرَاءَةَ الْفَاتِحَةَ فَاتِحَةَ الْكِتَابِ he said, also likewise, then what? He says, they also make and declare as an obligation to read Surah Al-Fatiha in the book. Qira'at Al-Fatiha. And we know that Surah Al-Fatiha is a rukun min arkan al-salat. It is a pillar from the pillars of the prayer. And we know the ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ that comes, the authentic narrations of the Prophet ﷺ that says, La salat al lam yaqra' bi fatiha al-kitab. And there's another narration that comes, it says, La salat al lam yaqra' bi um al-kitab. There's no prayer for the one who does not recite Fatiha al Kitab, meaning Surah al Fatiha. Surah al Fatiha, excuse me, everyone. There's no salah for the one who does not recite the Fatiha al Kitab as it comes in the hadith of Ibadat ibn al Samit. For that reason, we say, that it said is binding upon one to pray Salat al Isha, or excuse me, to read Salat al Fatiha. And this is the new affair which the Imam al Sabuni spoke about in the next line where he said, He said, and they declare an obligation, the recitation of Salat al Fatiha. 
behind the imam. So this is where we now want to start and talk about and elaborate on this point where it says that which is of binding upon them is in binding upon every Muslim to pray Surah Al-Fatiha. Due to the fact that you will find also likewise from, our, from the Ahnaf again, Ashab al-Ra'i, they say that it's not permissible. You'll find it was from the Madhab of Abu Hanifa and those who are Ashab al-Ra'i, the people of al-Ra'i gave their opinion in certain affairs of the religion. We said that the reason for them giving their opinion was because of that which they put forth of an utmost effort in trying to give that which is correct to the religion, but they came up short, and we said that that is incorrect, and this is not for one to follow them in that mistake, and that's not from our religion. <clears throat> but however, ya al Iqwa, we said that that which is of from Abu Hanifa and those who follow them, what happened is they say. From them, it breaks down the two aqwa. From Abu Hanifa, who say that is from those who follow the method of Abu Hanifa, from the Ahnaf, who are, who are Ashab al Ra'i, they say that it's detested to recite Surah Al Fatiha. It's from them that say that it's detested to recite Surah Al Fatiha. We said that this is incorrect. And from them who go to the, say that which is also incorrect, which is what they said is obligatory. Oh, excuse me, rather it's, excuse me, it's unlawful to recite Surah Al-Fatiha in that which is of what? In the Salah. It's, oh, it's, it's even impermissible. And we know that Imam al-Sabuni was from the Mashriq, he was from the East, from that which is the lands in the East. It wasn't in the West. And in those areas was the people who are Ashab al -Rai. And they were also, they were broadcast and they would spread this mistake amongst the people and they would say, and the Imam al-Sabuni took the opportunity and put this in the chapter in the book in order to refute this claim. Rather, is what? Rather, this is something which is incorrect. And you'll find the Ahnaf, they use as a delir. فَقَرَاءُوا مَا تَيَسَّرَ مِنْ Recite that which is easy for you. Meaning Surah Al-Muzammil. That's their delir in order to justify that it's detested. For one, not to recite Surah Al-Fatiha. And some of them, like we said, say is impermissible. Which is all incorrect. They use a delay of that which is in Surah Al Muzammil, Fakara'u ma tayasaramin. Recite that which is easy for you. And we know that this, this ayah was in that which is pertaining to the prayer at night. That was the voluntary prayer at night. And during the time in Mecca. And during the early part of the Wahi, which is in the time in Mecca. And you'll find some of them that they say other than that, that it suffices to read Surah Al Mutahamatan. يعني ما تيسر من القرآن they mean that which is easy from the Quran that is recite and some of them say that it's permissible to read in other than Arabia it's permissible to read in other than that which is in Arabic which is also incorrect which that they also these are some tremendous akhta these are tremendous mistakes which is bound upon one to stay away from and that's why you'll find that Imam al-Bukhari he put inside of a refutation which is called Al-Qira'atu Khalf al-Imam the Imam al-Bukhari, that he wrote a treatise, and it's called the recitation behind the Imam, behind the one who's leading the Salat. And also the Imam al-Bayhaqi, rahimahullah, and they brought tremendous an abundance of evidences to establish the obligation of re reciting Surah al-Fatiha. Upon who's the Imam, and upon who's the Ma'mum, and upon who's the Munfarid. Upon the one who's leading the Salat, and the one who's standing behind the Imam, and who he's leading, and the Munfarid, and the one who does it individually praise individually for that which we want to just sum up because we don't want to get inside the khilaf and bore everyone but what we want to say is an Imam Ahmed wa Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah rahimahullah is our Shaykh Rabi' ibn Hadi Madkhari hafidhullah he says this you'll find that an Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah in that which is in the new, new madhab that which is in his old statement and we know that he retracted and said there was in his the authentic madhab of Imam al-Shafi'i, he says obligatory to what? Recite Surah Al-Fatiha. And that agrees with the delay, agrees with the evidences and the proofs. But that which is your fan, the ra'i of Imam Ahmed, wa Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah rahimahullah, or rahimahumullah, that you'll find and you'll, they say that, they give a little type of tafsir. But Imam Ahmed, wa Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah, they give a little bit of detail. Shaykh, Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah and, and Imam Ahmed, Imam Ahl al-Sunnah, he says, إِذَا كَانَتَ الصَّلَاةِ سِرِّيَّةً فَعَلَّ الْجَمِيعِ 
على جميع قراءة الفاتحة. If the salah is done quiet, mean a person prays those prayers where you do it silently. He says it is upon everyone to recite Surah al Qira al Fatiha or Surah al Fatiha, which is the opinion of Imam Ahmed and Sheikh Islam Taymiyyah rahimahumullah. Then you'll find that which is they say in the Jahriya, that which is in, <coughs> which is done vocally, where the person was done audibly or where it's done in an audible manner where you can hear the voice of the Imam. He says, That the first two rak'at, such as, for example, Maghrib and Al Isha, the first two rak'at, Al Maghrib and Al Isha, which the Imam, you can hear his voice and his voice is audible. He says that the Ma'mum, those who are behind him, does not recite Surah Al Fatiha. Rather, they listen to the Imam. Taking the evidence and the proof, saying that. The Imam, the recitation of the Imam is the recitation for the Ma'mum. Is the recitation for the Surah Al Fatiha suffices for those who are behind him? That's the delay that Imam Ahmed and Shaykh Al Islam Taymiyyah use. For however, you'll find that the ulama from them are Shaykh Abdul Aziz bin Baz, and also likewise our Shaykh Rabi' and also Shaykh Muhammad ibn Ibrahim Ali Shaykh, and all the, and other than them from the great ulama. Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih ibn Uthaymeen Rahimahullah Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz even mentions and says that the rajih in that which is more correct and safer from one's religion is that he does recite it Even our Sheikh Rabi'i he even mentions and says وَيَنْتَهِزُ الْفُرْصَةَ فِي سَكَتَاتِ الْإِمَامِ أو عندما يقرأ الإمام فيقول الحمد لله رب العالمين فيقرأ في نفسه بحيث يسمع نفسه ولا يشوش على الآخرين الحمد لله رب العالمين وإذا قال الإمام الرحمن الرحيم يقول الرحمن الرحيم أو يقرأها في السكتة فلا بد من قراءة الفاتحة حتى قيل لي أبي هرارة إنا نكون وراء الإمام فقال اقرأ بها في نفسك وعند وفي لفظ للإمام أحمد اقرأ بها يا فارسي في نفسك فإني سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول قال الله تعالى قسمت صلاة بيني وبين عبدي ونصفي ولي عبدي ما سأل فإذا قال العبد الحمد لله رب العالمين قال حمد الدين عبدي فإذا قال مالك يوم الدين أثنى علي عبدي تلا أن الدين ناريشن as we all know he said that which is the strongest opinion let's listen what Sheikh Rabi'i even says he says وينتهي سو الفرصة في سكتات الإمام he says he takes the opportunity in that which is the silences of the one leading the salah for example a person says or the Imam says الحمد لله رب العالمين صوت الفاتحة as soon as he ends you say yourself, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. He says it quietly to yourself. In order to not disturb the other people who's, who's next to you. In order not to disturb those who are next to you. And if the Imam says, Ar-Rahman Rahim, and as soon as he comes to that quiet type of space, that little small sector, what they call it, which is that quiet, that little quiet period, after he recites that ayah, then you say it likewise to yourself. He says, but however, it's, it's obligatory to what? Recite Surah Al-Fatiha. Through to the other. And notice that he brought the statement of the Sahaba, radiallahu anhu, which is the great Sahabi, Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhar al-Dawsi, Abu Hurara radiallahu anhu, Arda, where he said, verily we're behind the Imam. And Abu Hurara said, Be, recite it to yourself. And another narration says, recite it, O Farisi, recite it to yourself. But verily, I heard the Prophet ﷺ say the hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has broken down the salat between me, or I have broken down the salat between me and my slave, two parts. And for my slave, what he asks for? And if he says all, pra all praises due to Allah, Rabbul Alameen, he says, my, Allah, my slave has praised me. And he says, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, he says that my, pray, my slave has glorified me. Then another narration, or as it goes on to the narration, it says he has praised me. To the end of the narration as we know. For that reason, Abu Huraira says that it's incumbent upon a one to, that he says Surah Al-Fatiha, rather it be that which is in the Sirriya or the Jahriya, whether it be in the Salat or the prayers that are silent or the Salat which are done what? In an audible manner or that which is done what they call Salat Al-Jahriya, the Salat that is done uh, audibly or that which you can hear the voice of the Imam reciting. So we bring that, break down three things. So, we have that which is of 
those from, uh, from the ulama, the Imam Ahmed, Shaykh al Islam, who give tafsir. They say that which is a salat to jahriya, salat which is done audibly, or in a manner where you can hear the voice of the Imam, which is salat al Isha, al Maghrib, al Fajr. He said that a person, when he's reciting, you hear the, the voice of the Imam, then what, everyone? What does that mean? That a person does not have to recite Surah Al Fatiha. That's the, the opinion of Imam Ahmed and Shaykh al Islam Taymiyyah. But we said that that which is of, which is binding, and which is the strongest opinion from those scholars, and some of that which is the opinion, I forgot to say, and this is my mistake, that the opinion of Shaykh Abdul Aziz bin Baz, and the opinion of, you'll find, of Shaykh al Islam, uh, and also Shaykh Muhammad ibn Ibrahim Ali Shaykh, and other than them from the great ulama of our time. If you go back, they say that these, this is an opinion of even that which is of a group of that which is from the Sahaba and the Tabi'in, which is, and likewise, and at the head of them was the great Sahabi, Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhar al Dosi, and Yamani al Azl, who is Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu arda, that he said, read it and recite it to yourself, meaning it doesn't matter whether it be in that which is Sirriya or Jahriya, whether the Salats are silent or the Salats that are done. Uh, loudly or in, a, or in a manner like we said where the voice of the imam is audible then you have that which is the opinion of the ahnaf and we said that this is incorrect and this is the reason why the imam al-sabuni put this in the book in order to refute that notion of ashab al rai the people of al rai or who followed the madhab of abu hanifa that they say some of them break it down and say that it's disliked it's that is disliked and is hated from one to recite Surah Al-Fatiha. And another narration upon the Ahnaf, they said it's impermissible. And we said that all of this is incorrect. And this is from a taqdeed that you'll find that this, these dangerous, uh, these mistakes, in which you'll find still to this day that people still apply it. And they are all incorrect and they oppose clearly and frankly the Kitab and the Sunnah. So that which we say, Ya Ma'ash al Ikhwa. <coughs> That which is obligatory is incumbent upon one to what? To pray and recite Surah Al-Fatiha in the book. And one should not leave off reciting it. Whether it be in the Salat al-Sirriya or Salat al-Jahriya. I think we'll suffice for this for today. So you take bit by bit. Because these affairs are very important. And these are from the mannerisms of Ahl al-Hadith. Is that they uh, stay away from that which is of these affairs. For example, staying away from that which is of muskirat. Of taking in intoxicants and all of this variety and all of his different types and also putting the salah off to the last part of his time and also likewise to recite Surah Al-Fatiha and like we said and the Imam al-Sabuni wallahu a'lam that they said that this was put in the chapter to clarify the mannerisms of Ahl Hadith after the clarification of the clear creed and what necessitates from that clear creed is actions and from those actions is certain obligations that have to be performed correctly and certain prohibitions that is binding upon one to stay far away from. And those and that is from these affairs of which we're reading now. So we'll stop here and suffice by that which we mentioned today. And then we'll continue the class uh, for Friday, inshallah bi idnillah. But anything is from me, anything is correct, is from Allah to Barikwa Ta'ala, and anything that's incorrect is from myself and Shaytan. I think we'll suffice by this. Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت وأستغفرك وأتوب إليك